this time on Open Framework Super Basics, I'm going through some beautiful simple code using sine waves for drawing, rebuilding an example from the artist designer Zach Lieberman, and adding color and variation, and looking at how we can make super complexity with very, very simple elements. Hi, welcome back another video. This week I'm going to do something slightly different where I'm actually working through and recreating and riffing off somebody else's code. And this is from an example video in the link below which I recommend you go and have a look at uh, from Zach Lieberman who is an artist, designer, researcher, educator, uh, pivotal in the open frameworks community and within the idea of creative coding and particularly what he calls poetic computation from SFPC, the School of Pu Poetic Computation in New York and um, involved in lots and lots of other things. Really worth uh, having a look and checking out what he's doing, especially the way that he talks about making art with machines. And he did a beautiful, simple example uh, as part of a demo, and I thought I'd riff off that a little bit because I was exploring and playing, and it was interesting to see the approach of a different artist working with code that felt very alien to mine in a way, uh, but very clearly from Zach's uh, perspective. Built an empty project, Got a new uh, higher contrast text, so that'll hopefully help a little bit. And when I come to my app CPP, I've already put a couple of things in there. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set my background to be black with OF set background color. And I'm going to be drawing loads and loads of circles. And you can set the resolution of a circle, i.e. how many sides it has or, or the, the, the smoothness of the edges with OF set circle resolution. And we're going to set it to be quite high because we want smooth edges, but you can play around with this number here and get completely different effects. And in my draw routine, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to say OF draw circle. And I'm going to get the width of the, uh, uh, of the screen with OF get width divided by two, which will find the width and put it in the middle. And then I've made a loop here for int i equals zero. So we start at zero, go to 900 in steps of five. And I'm gonna say, draw me in the circle at the width at position i. So it'll start at zero and then five and 10 and 15 and 20 and all the way down at a size of 100. So this should draw me uh, my um, 900 divided by 5, um, 180 circles. And if I run this now, it'll compile. And with the drawing colors background black, drawing color white, I run this full circle, we have this stripe of overlapping circles that runs all the way down the screen. So that's 900 circles or 180 circles in a straight line, which is great. But what I want to do now is this thing that Zach said. He said, well, okay, that's great. But instead of saying, draw the circle like that, let's draw the circle. And we said it's X position using something a little bit complicated here. Now, what he wants to do is use a sign to make a wave. And if we keep feeding different numbers into the sine function, it'll give us different numbers back that go backwards and forwards. And he's saying, okay, let's take time as an incrementing counter. So up at the top, we make a variable called time, and we say, get the elapsed time from the system. And we have this in our variable time now, which is just going to keep counting up as, as time goes on, as we're running through our application. And he's saying, okay, get the width divided by two, and get 100 and times it by the sine of i. So as we're going down, we're going to feed slightly different numbers into the sine function and add a tiny bit to it and then add time to it. Draw at our i position. So we're saying draw a circle, get the width, add this sine plus i times time. So it'll change with time and then it'll change as we go down the screen and we just draw it vertically at 100. And as time counts up, we're firing it to the sign. 
And as we move down the screen, we're adding I to it. So we get these differences in position from our sine function. We get this beautiful wave. And what it also then goes on to do is say, instead of having the width or the radius of the circle at a fixed size, we're going to say, make the size 50 plus 40 times, and using this sine function again, i plus a tiny bit plus time. So depending upon time, the circle's going to change size as we fire different values into this sine function. And what that gives us is our string of 1800 circles coming down, run this full screen. So we're going through our loop and it's giving us this i value and we're using it to draw circles down the screen and the x position is varying a little bit as we put time into the sine function. And then we're changing the radius as we're putting time into the sine function for the radius, which is beautiful. And it, it already, it feels like some of Zach Lieben's work. It's got this slow, sort of semi-organic pace that's a little geometric, but it's also very fluid. And he's saying, in the talk, he's saying he uses signs a lot in this way. And then he goes on, he says, okay, that's great. Let's start playing with the color. And as we've seen from previous videos, we can set color with RGB, so red, green, and blue. And he says, okay, so let's do this. And we'll start off with 127. So that's the middle. Color goes from 0 to 255. So the middle plus another half times this sine function again. So it'll start off in the middle and it can go up and down in the red value from there. And then we do the same with the green value and the blue value. But as he points out in the talk, he says, if we put them all the same, we're just changing gray value. So we're adting a tiny bit instead of plus times 0 0.01, it's times 0 0.011, 0 0.012. And it gives us these varying RGB values being generated by our sine function that we're feeding time into. So run this full screen again, and it goes through these beautiful power changes. We've got our uh, radius changing with time. We've got our, our X position changing with time. And now we have this beautiful palette change, really, really simply. So we're just drawing a repetition of circles, but because we're using this sine function, we can get these beautiful sine waves that we're applying to the width and the X position and the colors. And I thought, okay, that's, that's really nice. What I wanted to do was draw a lot more of them. I was wondering if I could get loads of them coming down the screen. So I made another loop outside our first loop. So our first loop writes down, but what I want to do is, is draw a whole load of these streamers coming down the screen. So I wrote this extra loop here over the top, getting X to go from one to 20. And then I said, OK, well, so every time we go through this loop, we draw 180 circles down. And then I want to draw another 180 circles and another and another in vertical streamers. So I said, OK, get the position 50 times X. So it'll start off at 50 and then go to 100, 150, 200 across the screen and then draw down. And I'm taking this same equation for making them wiggle. And all being well, we should have 20 of these wiggling streamers running down the screen at me. Which is really beautiful. And I was thinking, well, can I make them go out of phase with each other? And we now have these two values that are counting. I going down and X going across. And so what I can do is I can say, take the here, we're drawing a circle at this slightly more complicated value where we're saying 
50 plus the x, so we're counting across, plus time. In my draw for the x position, I'm going to add x into my time sign value, and I'm going to add it into the radius. So now the radius will be changed, and the x position will be changed by this looping x iteration. So as I've changed by using my outer x loop, I can get these beautiful ribbons intertwining. And then what I'm going to do, actually, is alter the color with this x value as well. So we're already using time and a sign function, and I'm just going to add x into, sorry, time plus x into my red value. So we're just going to alter the red value of our RGB generation of color, and run this now and we'll see that the colors will change in each ribbon as we're iterating through this x value so there we have it really super simple taking an example from zach lieberman i really do recommend you go and watch the video so thank you very much zach for the inspiration and also uh the just the amazing work in open frameworks that allows us to build more things really really lovely example go and explore some of the work that he's been having a look at and when you find pieces of code from other people i really do recommend because i was working through this super simple piece of code but it's not something that i would ever think of doing my approach is very very different i'm much more interested in stochastic randomness and very sharp edge stuff and very mechanical kind of uh edgy, you know, I love fat bleeps, I love raw machine noise. And this is a very different sensibility. And that I found very interesting going and working through somebody else's work and seeing what's their thinking, not only in the structure, but in the artistic output. So go and have a play. The source code I'll put online, but you can pull it from Zach's uh, example. And if you're making interesting stuff, or you've got variations, please do post them into the comments, hit the subscribe button, and on the next video, I'm going to be looking at a whole new load of stuff working with Open Frameworks. So I'll see you next time.